So before I go much further, I want to provide you a little bit of an example that I'll be using throughout this uh, first session to kind of clarify some of the terms I'm talking about. So imagine that you have a bunch of features describing a set of banking customers, and you're trying to determine who to target with a new offer via telemarketing. So that's kind of the business problem that you have, and that's the problem that you want to solve using artificial intelligence in some way, right? So first of all, we'll talk about what we're going to talk about what we call the attributes or features, also sometimes referred to as the independent variables. So these things could include things like the age of the customer, their job type, their marital status, the da day of the last contact by uh, um, one of the agents who are trying to uh, convince them to buy the new offer, and the duration of the last contact. And these also could be about the new offer, they could be about old offers, whatever, right? There, there's just a bunch of data about the individual. The realization, so those are called features or attributes. The realization of those features are called the value. So if the age is 42, then 42 is the value, right? The feature is age, right? There also can be, the besides, so besides those features, we also have the target attribute or the output variable, or sometimes it's called the class or the dependent variable, right? And that's what you're trying to predict, right? Um, in a classification example, right, it's a binary or categorical variable a lot of times, will the client respond to a telemarketing call, right? But it could also be in a regression example, the target attribute could be how much will they respond to the target marketing call, right? Like, like how much money will they put into the, the next purchase? Um, and a particular set of attribute values is called an instance, right? So if we have all the values, all the age, job, blah, 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 and the target attribute, that is called an instance that we can learn from. So we should also talk about a little bit about how to evaluate these features. So imagine now I have a tool, doesn't matter what it is, right? That makes a prediction as to whether or not someone's gonna take this new telemarketing example. I could build a model that models the data internally, right? Just on the data I actually have, right? And that would be in sample data, right? The model is then evaluated on the basis of some in sample criteria like R squared or AIC or BIC, where we just say, here's the model, here's how well it fits the data, right? Traditionally, a lot of predictive models, though, are actually evaluated out of sample. The model, the model is evaluated on the basis of some criteria measured against a holdout data set that was not used to create the model, in which case then I can talk about the accuracy of the model, what's its true positive rate, what its false positive rate is, what its recall and precision is, and we'll define each of those terms as we go through the next few slides. Another way to think about this is that the model is really divided into training data, the data that is used to train a machine learning model, and testing data, sometimes also called the holdout data, which is the out of sample data used to evaluate the model, right? Uh, so we have, we take all of our customers, right? And we know whether or not they respond and we're trying to figure out what's the best model to use. Maybe we split it into a 90% and 10% case where we take 90% of the data, we build our model on that, and then we test on 10%. Now that's a standard training testing setup, but another approach that you can use is something called cross-validation. In cross-validation, you're gonna construct K folds of the data, and essentially what that means is you're gonna split the data up into chunks, right? So if you have 100 instances, maybe I take 10 folds, right? Which means that each instance has, sorry, each fold has 10 instances in it. Um, and we create a model on K minus one fold, so we take 90 of them and we predict the 10th fold, right, those last 10 individuals. We then repeat that process k times, so, you know, maybe the first time we hold out the 10th fold, and the second time we hold out the 9th fold, the third time we hold out the 8th fold, and so on, right? Then we keep training models, training models, training models, so now we actually have 10 models, right, and we know how well they accurately predicted the holdout in each case, right, and that allows us to kind of get an idea of how well this overall approach is going to work in this space and maybe we can gain some insights from looking at those models and seeing if they all come to the same thing. Um, and so this cross-validation really helps to show that the evaluation of the model is not dependent upon any particular training data set that you're using. Another distinction we need to draw is between supervised learning and unsupervised learning. In supervised machine learning is where a training data set is provided in which the target attributes are provided for some of the data, right? So the bank telemarketing example, right? We know in the training data set whether or not someone took the promotion, right? And so, so or decided to take 
purchase the promotion or whatever, right? So in that case, right, we have a supervised machine learning problem. But there are some cases in machine learning where we just want to explore the data we have, right? Or we're not sure what the labels are. And instead, there is no target attribute, and the goal is to find commonality. So topic detection is a classic example of this. If I take, give you a bunch of tweets, and I say, find what the, class, what the topics are that these tweets share, it's, you don't have a list of those topics ahead of time that are listed for each of the tweets. So instead, you have to explore the data set and cluster the tweets that are similar together in such a way as that they really kind of bind together for one topic. So another way to describe this, right, is then the supervised machine learning framework. You're given training data, attributes, plus target attributes. You run a machine learning method to create a learned model, right? You then pass some testing data through to that, and you compare that to the, you compare the outputs of that model to the target attributes of the testing data, and that really determines the effectiveness of the model. In an unsupervised machine learning context, right, you have some sort of training data, right? Um, and you pass it into your machine learning method. And what you're learning, your learned model, is a set of clusters usually, or profiles, or co-occurrence of data that says these data sets are like other similar ones, right? Um, and in this case, you can get testing data too, which you could pass in, which would be data not used to train. And then you could see how well that testing data is also clustered in order to understand the effectiveness of the model. Right? Another distinction to machine learning that's useful to think about is regression versus classification. I've kind of alluded to this already. But classification is the idea that the target attribute is a categorical variable. So true versus false, high value versus low value. It could be high value versus medium value versus low value, right? But it's a set of categorical variables. Whereas regression means that the target attribute is actually numerical. So things like customer lifetime value, probability of churn, those would be, um, those would be numerical um, target attributes that would be more amenable to a regression type of solution as opposed to classification. Now there's a mapping, right, to some extent that we can go back and forth. Uh, because, for instance, if we have 100 classes in our classification problem, Right, then we're getting closer to a regression, right? And if we're in our regression problem, the target attribute is really only one or two cases, or we could process it, like we could label high value, low value, right? Then we're moving into classification world.